The Global Women's Basketball team defeated the Notre Dame Fighting Irish on the road on Sunday. We'll talk about the contest and preview the upcoming ACC Women's Basketball Conference Tournament on this episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Level Podcast. Today's bonus episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcing work for the university. I want to take this time to personally thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services. Five days a week, your team every day. The women's basketball team defeated Notre Dame on the road 86-64 to in the regular season finale. Um, we will discuss why that matchup was significant. We'll also preview the upcoming ACC Women's Basketball Conference Tournament, um, giving the initial takeaways and reaction for the uh, for the for Louisville's journey, and then we'll finally answer the question: Does Louisville need to win the ACC tournament to get a number one seed in the NCAA tournament? Uh, we'll start out talking about the regular season finale. The Cardinals went on the road to South Bend to take on the 14th ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And it was lopsided from the very beginning. 86-64, to 64, the final score. But what was notable was the first half. And for Louisville, who went into the intermission break with a 54-15 to 15 advantage, it was um, you know, a, the, a story of great offense matched with is equally great defense. And I, I may be being a little biased here, but I think this is one of the best, if not the best, you know, overall halves that I've ever seen from a whole team, you know, in my years of watching basketball. Now, obviously I'm 23. I'm a little younger. So some of you may have watched more basketball than I have. Um, I'm trying to think throughout, you know, basketball, you know, both men and women's a first half that's been that great. Obviously talking about, uh, you know, college basketball. I'm thinking maybe maybe that 2015 uh, Kentucky men's team had some halves where, you know, they were extremely dominant. But for on the women's side of things, I think that this is probably the most dominant half of basketball that I've seen uh, from a Jeff Walls team. Maybe, I mean, possibly in his tenure here at Louisville, the Cardinals were extremely efficient in the first quarter. They were seven of seven from behind the arc. They led 31 to three after the first quarter, went on a 10-0 run to start the second quarter. In the Fighting Irish, um, were able to you know get some of the points back, scored twelve in the second quarter, and then it was all Notre Dame in the second half. Um, Louisville's lead was ultimately cut to twenty-two, but um, even though the score is was very lopsided, I don't even think that that deficit tells you know the full story and depicts just how you know far out of reach this game was, almost from you know the first you know excuse me, initial tip. Um, I mean, it was one of the best performances of the season, if not the best. The Cardinals, uh, this is the second blowout victory that they've had over Notre Dame. You know, it's a, a great victory over a top, you know, 15 opponent. Um, I Last week, I predicted Louisville to win this game, but by about, I think it, I think I said like, I don't even know what I said. I think it was, it was less than like seven points or something like that. But the Cardinals came out and they did exactly what I said that they needed to do. Number one, I wanted to see a good game from Kiana Smith. I know that she had struggled at times and you know down the stretch. She was nine of sixteen from the field on Sunday afternoon. I had tied a game high twenty points. Um, Emily Inksler also had twenty. She had I'm sorry Haley Van Lith had twenty. I apologize. Four for five from behind the arc. Six rebounds. Five assists. Emily Inksler seventeen. Ten six three. Um, Chelsea Hall had 13 points. Narika Kono, um, you know, played her first minutes of game action in you know over a month. Um, you know, definitely glad to have her back. Um, not only on you know on the Cardinal bench, but also you know playing meaningful minutes. And like I mentioned, this game was far out of reach. 
Notre Dame did um, double up the Cardinals in the last quarter. It was thirty to fifteen, I believe, in terms of the you know the scoring totals in that last quarter. But you know Jeff Walls emptied the bench with you know you know with with over I think three minutes left in the game, and it's it's one of those things to where. You know, it's, it, it, I'm not saying that the team became disinterested, but it, it's hard to, you know, keep adding on totals, you know, especially against a very solid team. Notre Dame did fight back, but I think that that just epitomizes how dominant Louisville was in Sunday's games. The fact that Notre Dame scored twice as many points as the Cardinals in the fourth quarter. They outscored the Cardinals in the third quarter, and they still lost by 22 points. So a great end to the regular season. Um, you know, the matchup against Pittsburgh on Thursday was kind of one of those not necessarily it was not very inspiring, so to speak. The Cardinals did get a double digit victory on the road, but it seemed like offensively they struggled to get going. They're eight for 14 from behind the arc um, yesterday, 57 percent uh, from three. They also shot 58.5 percent from the field, which is which was huge. They out rebounded Notre Dame 40 to 22. I believe it was 50 to 32 in the um, the first matchup with the Irish, but they forced 12 turn. They actually turned the ball over more times than, um, you know, Notre Dame. It was 16 to 12 in that margin, but it was a great game. I think that my keys to the game coming in was shooting the ball well, um, you know, forcing Notre Dame to take tough shots, you know, winning the, um, you know, the rebounding battle, and they did just that. They, I, I wouldn't necessarily go to say that Notre Dame struggled from behind the arc. They're 5 for 14, which is 35.7%, which is not bad by any stretch. But the fact that Louisville was, um, you know, 8 for 14, and they shot over 50% from three, 50% from the field. Look, it's going to be very hard to beat a team when that team is shooting over 50% from the field and 50% behind the arc. It's going to be even tougher to beat a team that is shooting that well and plays extremely good defense. Louisville's defense was very, very solid in this one. Um, I'm extremely glad to see the Louisville offense continually, you know, um, you know, improving over the course of the season. And we saw firsthand what happens when the Louisville's big three is showing out. Emily Inksler, Haley Van Lith, and Kiana Smith combined for 57 of Louisville's 80, what was it, 86 points? Yeah, Louisville's 86 points. Um, Olivia Cochran uh, had three points, kind of struggled from the field, one of five. Uh, Liz Dixon uh, leading the scores off the bench. She was a perfect four for four uh, with eight points, four rebounds to go with that. Um, Narika Kono, Mikasa Robinson also had a couple points to begin with, uh, or uh, to add, be added into that mix. So I was very impressed with the intensity right off the bat. It seems like this Louisville team, maybe not their kryptonite, but I'd, I'd say, you know, definitely their Achilles heel is the first quarter of some games. I feel like they it, it takes them a little while to get going. It seems like they're definitely, uh, for the most part, a second half team. But, I mean, the Cardinals came out right away. And they, you know, when you go up 31 to three, number one, I don't know what's more impressive, scoring 54 in the first half or limiting the team that you're playing to 15. Because what, what kind of, I'm not saying it gets lost um, in this equation. As impressive as it is that you're doing this to a team and you're holding them to 15 at halftime, let's also not forget the fact that this is Notre Dame. This is a Notre Dame team that is ranked in the top 15. This is a Notre Dame team that has had not lost in South Bend all season long. They defeated NC State up in South Bend. We talked on um, the Friday episode of the show of who all they've beaten at home. They've beaten North Carolina. They've beaten NC State. They've beaten uh, Georgia Tech all up in at Notre Dame. And the Cardinals come in and they, you know, they blow – they blow the Notre Dame out. So, I mean, it's it's an incredible um, result for the Cardinals and a big, you know, morale. Uh, I'm not going to say necessarily morale booster because I feel like this team does a great job of never getting too high, never getting too low. But, you know, momentum's a, a real thing, and they played extremely well today. Got a very good win. Um, I do want to transition now into previewing the upcoming ACC Women's Basketball Conference Tournament. I'm giving – to start out with uh, giving the initial reaction to the um, – to the final bracket. We'll do that here in just a second. After we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Bet Online. Football might be over for the season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. 
from all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fire coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. It remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And look, it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline is where the game starts. The ACC Women's Basketball Conference Tournament Bracket is finalized after the regular season concluded on Sunday afternoon and into the evening with uh, Virginia Tech uh, losing a close one at home to NC State. The Wolfpack win the ACC regular season um, title. They are the number one seed um, in Greensboro this upcoming week. The first round will start on Wednesday. Louisville gets a double bye. They are the two seed. The initial reaction to the bracket is that I think that the Cardinals got a very favorable draw when it comes to the teams that they um, could you know, possibly see before they get to the um, conference championship, assuming that they make it to there. Um, the teams that they are not playing uh, until that they wouldn't be playing until the championship, NC State, North Carolina, Boston College, Virginia Tech. Um, obviously, NC State, you were you knew you were going to be on the other side of the bracket being number one and number two. North Carolina, the only one of the only well, actually the only team in the ACC that has beaten you outside of NC State is on the other side of the bracket. Uh, Boston College, who, even though they're an eight seed, I think that they're a very dangerous eight seed. They're a team that can definitely throw a wrench in uh, NC State NC State's plans, assuming that the Eagles defeat Florida State on Thursday. Um, just a little bit of an overview of where the Cardinals stand. They will play at 6 o'clock in the quarterfinals on Friday. They will take on the winner of Miami. Um, and Duke slash Pittsburgh. So Duke and Pittsburgh are the 10 and 15 matchup that ta- that that square off on Wednesday. The winner of that plays Miami, and then the winner of that plays Louisville. I think that this is one of those to where, yeah, Miami gave the Cardinals a very tough game down in Coral Gables, um, you know, about a month ago. But at the end of the day, I think that the Cardinals struggled offensively in that game. Defensively, they weren't the greatest either. Um, very sloppy game that Miami took advantage of. Uh, I think that the Cardinals are better suited to play Miami than they would a team, say, Boston College, especially with the way that the Eagles can shoot the ball from behind the arc and how good they are at, you know, uh, penetrating the lane and getting to the basket. I think that despite the Cardinals being tested on the road against Miami, assuming that they do play Miami, uh, the Cardinals are – you would rather play them than the alternative. Let's say the Duke or Pittsburgh wins. I think that – um, you know, Duke, you, I wouldn't necessarily gave the Cardinals a huge test. I think at, at times the, you know, Louisville let off the gas a little bit, but the Cardinals, um, yeah, this is a team that they are, are definitely better than, in my opinion. And Pittsburgh is a team that the you other know, Louisville has beaten by 11 recently as last Thursday, and they beat them what 81 to 39 back in January. So, uh, you know, the first matchup that the Cardinals will, Excuse me. First matchup that the Cardinals will play, I I think it's a, a pretty solid, um, you know, possible you know, opponent list. You know, you have to respect the opponents you play, but I do think that I would rather play, um, you know, Miami slash Duke slash Pittsburgh rather than I would, you know, Boston College or even Florida State. Um, uh, you know, previewing the semifinals, Wake Forest and Virginia are the eleven and fourteen. The winner of that will play Georgia Tech. The winner of that will play Notre Dame. So, uh, you know, uh, assuming that the top seeds win Notre Dame and Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech would give the Cardinals a little bit of a fit. We saw what they did in Atlanta early on in the ACC slate. The uh, Yellow Jackets are perhaps possibly a better defensive team than a very good defensive team in Louisville. So it, it's going to be a game of, um, you know, who can score more points the first of 50 wins, so to speak. But, uh we, we've seen it throughout the past couple seasons for Louisville to where I think some teams have been a better fit to play the Cardinals than others. I don't think that Notre Dame matches up well with Louisville. Obviously, two losses, um, you know, both by at least, what, 20 points. So it's, I think, 22 points is the, the least amount of, you know, the, 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 I can't speak, the smallest deficit, so to speak. Sorry. Um, if the Cardinals draw Notre Dame, obviously it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. 
I would rather play Notre Dame and Georgia Tech than I would um, North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Um, I think that even though the Cardinals defeated Virginia Tech you know, on senior day, they're a very, very solid team. Um, you know, we saw what they just did against NC State. They took them right down to the wire and lost by three points. Virginia Tech and North Carolina. North Carolina is a team that's beaten Louisville thus far. I think that the Cardinals would ultimately rather play North Carolina than maybe like a Georgia Tech. Um, but ultimately, I think that this is a very solid draw for the Cardinals. Not only do you um, get a favorable first, um, you know, first game matchup in the quarterfinals, but you also in the semis you have a chance to play a team in Notre Dame that you've seen twice, that you've beaten by over 20 points. It's clear that you know defensively the, the Cardinals really make things tough on the offensive side of the ball for Notre Dame. Um, they're not really able to get offense going, or they haven't been in the last two uh, matchups against um, the Cardinals. And then the other teams on the side of the bracket, obviously you escape the possible sleeper option in the ACC in Boston College. I think that you know, they, they could make things very interesting against NC State um, here um, on uh, Friday afternoon. And then the 4-5 matchup, I think, is a little bit better than the 3-6 matchup. I would rather play the 3 than I would the 4, the 5, or the 6 if I were the Cardinals, just based upon, you know, some of the matchups that they have coming up. So, Overall, you're still going to have to win games. You're still going to have to, you know, um, you know, face an NC State slash Boston College slash North Carolina slash Virginia Tech, assuming that you get to the conference championship, which you can't assume anything. Uh, we saw in 2020 when you um, you put, you don't play your best game, you can get beat, and um, you especially to a team that is inferior to yours in talent wise. So, ultimate reaction, very solid, um, you know. Side of the bracket for Louisville, I would expect that Louisville makes the conference championship. I think that the real question is, does Louisville have to win this conference championship to get a number one seed? I'm going to answer that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Bilt Bar. Look, it's usually that time of the year that I've pretty much given up on all my resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Bilt Bar. It's, it almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Um, if you haven't tried the puffs, they're the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, um, not just a protein bar, they're a treat and covered in 100% real chocolate, which, fun fact, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low calorie, high in protein. You're able to replace your candy bars with these. Um, you can scroll down on Built.com and check out check out the my, macros chart. You'll be blown away by all of the high protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb products that they have. At Built Bar, it's all about taste. They make it taste delicious first and figure out how to make it healthy after. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So do yourself a favor. You, Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Once again, that's use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Final segment of this bonus episode of the show. Uh, we're talking about whether or not the Louisville women's basketball team needs to win the ACC Conference Championship to get a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um this is kind of a multi-layered question. It's more complex than just a yes or no answer. Um, I think that really the answer is they don't have to, but it's it's questionable. If you win the AC Conference Tournament, you're going to get a number one seed. If you don't, you're probably going to need some help from the teams that are playing against the other seeds that are, that are in contention. Um, there's also the aspect of if North does it matter if NC State makes it or not when you answer this question? I think it does because if NC State makes the conference championship and you lose to them, I don't necessarily think it hurts your resume as much than if you lose to a team like Virginia Tech or North Carolina or maybe even Boston College if they were to pull off the upset. But, you know, to play devil's advocate, both Virginia Tech and NC State are um, – Virginia Tech and North Carolina are currently ranked. I'm not sure if, North, if Virginia Tech is going to be, um, you know, ranked when it comes to the final uh, – or when it comes to the next ranking considering they just lost to NC State. But overall, I think if you were to lose the conference championship, you would rather 
lose to NC State, considering that they are in line for a one seed rather than a team like um, North Carolina or Virginia Tech, because you can look, you know, at the committee and say, "Hey, look, look at our resume. We've got, um, you know, a, a list of." You know, ranked victory, some very convincing wins. We have four losses on the season. One of them is to North Carolina, who came into the conference cha- com- conference championship week ranked. One of them is to Arizona, who is a top 12 opponent. And the other two are to North Carolina State, who is going to be in line for a one seed. So I think that it's hard for a committee to look at Louisville's resume and be like, you know what, this is going to be a number two seed. But that's why I'm saying that you have to, um, if you don't win the conference tournament, you have to get some help from the teams that are on the outside looking in or the teams that are playing those teams. Um, you know, in contention for a one seed, I think that Baylor at 21 and 5 is sitting right there. They do have a top 10 uh, matchup coming up. Um, I believe it's, yeah, it's tonight when they, you know, they're at number nine, Iowa State. Um, you know, Big 12 tournament, if they're able to win that, you know, who knows? Michigan at 21 and 4, Yukon at 19 and 5, even at you know teams like LSU at 23 and 4 and Iowa State at you know 22 and 4. Um you know you have to uh I think that the the best mindset to go in is you know if you don't win and another team wins their conference tournament they're going to get a one seed although that might not necessarily be true because let, let, let's take Michigan for example. If Michigan wins the Big 10 it's going to be hard to justify the Wolverines getting that number one seed over Louisville number one, you know, number one, because the Cardinals defeated Michigan by nearly thirty points in that first matchup in December. Yes, I realize it was December, but head-to-head matchups still matter and should be at the top of the priority. Same with UConn. The Cardinals did defeat the Huskies without Paige Beckers, without Azzy Fudd and company, but it still is a head-to-head victory. And the you know UConn right now. I think that the resume for the Cardinals is better than that of Michigan, of UConn. Um, I think that if, if the real you know, question becomes if LSU wins their conference tournament, because you assume that's going to be a win over Tennessee, you're going to um, you know you might have a win against Tennessee. Um, you probably would argue that if LSU is to win the conference tournament, it's going to also come against a victory over South Carolina which is a huge resume-boosting win, does a four-loss LSU team that won the SEC tournament get over a five-loss Louisville team that does not win the conference tournament? The same applies for the Baylor Bears. And maybe Iowa State, depending on how you look at it, Baylor is uh, 21-5 and five on the season. I'm um, looking at some of the wins that they have. They have lost to Michigan uh, this season. They've lost to Oklahoma. they beat beaten Iowa State. Um, they beat in Texas twice, uh, you know, so, so it really, you know, begs the question, does Baylor, does Iowa state, does LSU, do they have, you know, the resume to be able to knock off Louisville from that number one seed line? If Louisville was not to win the conference tournament and if the, um, you know, if one of those respective teams is to win the conference tournament, I think that. I think that really the only way that that is able to be brought up into conversation, and I, I, I didn't mention this yet, I think that Louisville has to get to the conference championship you know, to you know, be sure that they get a one seed. Because if you get to the conference championship and you lose, you have to assume you're going to add you know, a win against a ranked team and you know, Georgia Tech or Notre Dame. You, know, you would have to assume that that's you know, who you're going to play in the semis. Um, so... I don't necessarily think that if they lose, they're not going to be a one seed. I'm not saying that, but I, I'm I'm saying that it makes things more interesting if a team like Baylor or Iowa State or maybe LSU. But even then, you have to argue, well, the resumes aren't necessarily there, and Louisville's beaten you know plenty more ranked teams than the other three. So um, I think that you know, barring any disaster where they lose in the quarterfinals, I think Louisville is still primed for a number one seed. Um, before we get out of here today, before we get out of here today, I want to give a couple quick shout outs. Uh, first the Cardinal sports on podcast. You can get, um, you can check that out at Cardinal sports I want to say thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And now make your second listen locked on NFL draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight analysis 
on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Also want to remind you that the Locked On the Louisville YouTube page, there is a new one up. So the one with 100 and like 145, 150 subscribers, that is no longer the um you know the locked on Louisville YouTube page that will be deleted here within the you know the next month. The new one um if you ch- if you follow this on social media um you will you will see the new YouTube page get linked. So um check that out, subscribe. I want to say thank you to everyone who's liking, sharing, subscribing, rating the podcast on all listening platforms. It's definitely appreciated. That's gonna wrap up this uh mon- this bonus episode for the Monday episode of the show. There's gonna be no episode tomorrow, unfortunately but we will be back on on Wednesday. So we'll see you then and go crazy.